So, we will uh, uh, discuss normal shock waves in this uh, uh, in this lecture. Uh, normal shock waves are compression waves, this is very important. Normal shock waves are compression waves and that are usually seen in um, uh, nozzles, um, uh, turbo machinery, blade passages, uh, supersonic intakes. So, these are intakes uh, that are uh, uh, provided uh, in front of the engine of supersonic aircraft like SR-71, Concorde, um, uh, F-15 and so on. Okay. Uh, they are also seen in uh, shock tubes. In fact, uh, the reason for, um, for discussing shock waves in this course is precisely because they are encountered in nozzles. Okay. Since our focus is on uh, learning or understanding uh, compressible flow through nozzles and since this appears in uh, nozzles uh, regularly, we need to uh, learn about normal shock waves. Okay. But normal shock waves are seen in external flows also, uh, flow over uh, aircraft, flow over aircraft wings and so on. Okay. Uh, good example of that uh, is uh, shown here. Uh, I must apologize that I am not able to ascertain the source of this picture, but you can see here the picture of an F-14 which is a supersonic aircraft uh, uh, as it uh, breaches the sound barrier. Okay. So, you can see this uh, uh, this vapor halo uh, which is actually condensation of water droplets, but that shows uh, uh, what happens when the uh, aircraft we, uh, starts to move at supersonic speeds. So, you can see these types of shock waves only when uh, the aircraft begins to move uh, with supersonic speeds or in a frame of reference where the aircraft is stationary, the air moves uh, with supersonic speed over the stationary aircraft. Uh, either ways. Okay. So, this is a very nice illustration of, uh, of a shock wave and this is an external flow. Okay. The same sort of thing is seen in internal flows also as I just mentioned, uh, nozzles, uh, turbo machinery, blade passages uh, and so on. Okay. And it is a compression wave that is uh, that is important and we will uh, discuss that in a greater detail as we go along. And the compression process across the shock wave is highly irreversible. And so, and as we, um, uh, as I mentioned in the previous lecture, any irreversibility flow is uh, tantamount or any loss of stagnation pressure is tantamount to uh, irreversibility and irreversibility as you know uh, results in loss of exergy. So, this is uh, undesirable in most cases. Although in some cases actually we can exploit uh, uh, the efficiency of normal shock compression process. So, you can actually think of normal shock uh, as, um, as, a mean of, as a means of compressing a flow without any moving parts. Right. So, we do not utilize a compressor, you can actually compress a flow uh, by means of a normal shock. So, when you look at it that way for certain sorts of examples, we can actually exploit this fact. Okay. It is very desirable. Okay, we will uh, we will take a look at these things as we uh, as we go along. Okay. Now, um, if you really think about um, uh, physical situations where one would encounter this, uh, for example, in addition to this, um, for example, uh, normal shock wave is rather like a blast wave, you know, which uh, goes across. It's a single wave, very powerful, and moves at uh, and the wave itself moves with supersonic speed. If you are an observer standing like this and looking at the wave. <clears throat> so, ahead of the wave is uh, quiescent air for instance and behind the wave is actually uh, air that has been affected by the passage of the shock and in, uh, in the case of the shock wave, the air behind it moves with uh, very high speeds as well unlike that of an acoustic wave. Okay. And the wave itself moves with a supersonic speed. Now, this is in contrast to an acoustic wave which is actually a wave train. So, it is a, uh, uh, it is alternating uh, compression and rarefaction as the uh, wave uh, goes through. Okay. So, that is the big difference between uh, an acoustic wave and a normal shock wave. Okay. Normal shock wave is not a, uh, it is not a wave train, it is a single wave front, whereas an acoustic wave is usually composed of uh, wave fronts with the compression and rarefaction. Okay. Now, we use the term normal uh, uh, shock wave and the term normal is used to denote the fact that the shock wave is normal or perpendicular to the flow direction. Uh, just like what we showed for the um, uh, for the acoustic wave, in our uh, view of things, for example, in a frame of reference where the nozzle, I'm sorry, where the shock wave is stationary, the direction of normal shock wave uh, is not perpendicular to the flow direction, as you can see here. Oops, as you can see here. Um, <coughs> 
and there is no change in the flow direction uh, as a result of passing through a normal shock wave. So, in this case the flow is perpendicular to the normal shock wave as it approaches the shock wave and it remains perpendicular to the normal shock wave after it passes through the shock wave. Now, this is in contrast to oblique shock waves which are more frequently seen in nature uh, where um, uh, the flow is deflected or uh, turned as after it passes through the shock wave. It may be perpendicular approaching the shock wave, but after it passes through the shock wave, uh, it actually is inclined to the shock wave. Okay. So, we will now take a look at uh, take a look at uh, thermodynamic and flow aspects of normal shock waves in calorically perfect gases only. The theory is far too complicated uh, in, uh, in the case of steam or refrigerant. So, we will not do that. We will only look at uh, the thermodynamic and flow aspects of normal shock waves in calorically perfect gases. Okay, so in a, uh, I'm sorry, in a frame of reference where the uh, where the shock wave uh, is stationary, and the situation uh, is as depicted here, more or less similar to what we had earlier for uh, for an acoustic wave. Okay, the only difference being, let me just uh, show that with a slightly different color. So in the case of an acoustic wave. So, this one, this is uh, 2. So, the, uh, the speed of the fluid as it approaches the wave is uh, equal to the speed of sound and the uh, speed of the fluid after it passes through, if you recall, we said this was uh, V2 equal to V1 plus dV1. So, it changes only by an infinitesimal amount. Whereas, in this case as we have already said uh, this speed is usually uh, supersonic. So, this is actually greater than the speed of sound uh, corresponding to this state A1. So, if you want to be very specific we can say this is equal to A1. And V2 is also not uh, infinitesimally uh, different from V1. It is actually uh, considerably different from V1. <coughs> Okay, so, you have mentioned this and changes in properties across an acoustic wave are infinitesimal and hence isentropic, whereas they are large and irreversible across a normal shock wave. So, which means that S2 is greater than S1 in this case and here S2 is equal to S1. Okay, so, once again we write the governing equations in the usual form continuity, momentum and energy equation and um, uh, by using the definition of the Mach number and the calorically perfect assumption, we can uh, come up with expressions like this. And in fact, if we combine all the three expressions, we end up with something that looks like this. Okay. Notice that m1 is known because that is the uh, speed of the fluid approaching the shock wave. So, given uh, p1, t1 and v1, so those are known. right? So, in this shock wave if you see uh, uh, p1, uh, t1, v1. So, this completely describes the state of the fluid uh, before the shock wave. So, given these quantities, how do we determine v2, uh, uh, p2 and t2? So, that is the uh, question that um, lies before us. Okay? So, that means M1 is known. So, M1 is known and M2 is not, uh, M2 is unknown. So, although this equation uh, looks somewhat complicated, it is actually, uh, it actually is not. It is uh, in fact a quadratic equation in M2 square. Okay? Um, so, in fact, uh, the, uh, if you go ahead and solve this uh, quadratic equation, you can do so in closed form and obtain an expression for M2 uh, in terms of other quantities. Notice that once uh, M2 is known, all the other properties may be evaluated say uh, using this relationship and using this relationship, right. M1 is known, if M2 is also known, then I can get P2 and T2. V2 can also be uh, obtained once M2 is, uh, once these quantities are known. 
So, if you solve this, uh, you get only one meaningful solution to this. Other solutions are, you know, m1 equal to m2 and so on, uh, which uh, may be neglected. So, we get uh, this expression for uh, m2. Now, uh, this actually admits two solutions. One for which m1 is greater than 1, the flow is supersonic approaching the wave and m2 uh, being subsonic. Okay, so, after passing through the shock wave, the flow becomes subsonic and S2 is greater than S1. So, this is a compression solution. Okay, that is very, very important. This is a compression solution. So, P2 is greater than P1 and in fact, T2 is also greater than T1 in this case. The other solution that is admitted uh, by mathematics is that M1 is subsonic and M2 is supersonic. So, the flow is accelerated to supersonic speeds after passing through the shock wave and S2 is less than S1. Since this is an adiabatic flow, remember our energy equation looks like this. So, there is uh, this corresponds to an adiabatic flow Q is equal to 0. So, that means that the entropy must remain the same or increase in an adiabatic flow. So, S2 less than S1 is not possible this is forbidden. So, this solution is not permitted or not seen in real life. Although mathematics allows it, in real life this is not seen because it would violate second law of thermodynamics. Of course, one more solution that is possible is simply that of an acoustic wave m1 equal to 1, m2 equal to 1 and s2 equal to s1. So, this is isentropic process with the Mach number approaching the wave being equal to 1, right. So, this is the solution that we will focus on. Okay. Now, let us try to uh, uh, show this uh, solution, normal shock solution on a TS diagram. Okay. So, but on a TS and a PV diagram. So, uh, state 1, P1, T1 and V1 are given. So, uh, you know that this is equal to two Cp and this is the stagnation state corresponding to state 1, 0, 1. So, T0 and P0 for this uh, stagnation state are also indicated here and the same information is shown uh, on a PV diagram here. So, uh, this is uh, this is S equal to constant line, state 1 lies here. This is the isotherm uh, corresponding to the stagnation temperature. So, the point of intersection of the two uh, is the stagnation state and this is P0, 1. So, the point of intersection of the S equal to constant line and the stagnation temperature line gives us the stagnation state. Same thing is shown here also. Now, remember uh, this is a solution for which M1 is greater than 1. Okay? So, we need to show that explicitly here which we have done here. So, once I have T0, I can calculate T star in the same manner as uh, I showed in the uh, previous lecture. So, the uh, acoustic state uh, star state is uh, shown here. So, this is the m equal to 1 line, all states that lie below this are supersonic states and all states that lie above this line are subsonic states. So, clearly state 1 is a supersonic state. We have done the same thing. So, we have drawn the isotherm corresponding to T equal to T star here and the line of and the point of intersection of the T equal to T star isotherm and the S equal to S1 line gives us the sonic state. Clearly, this is a supersonic state. So, now we wish to uh, locate uh, the downstream state uh, on this diagram. Remember uh, the uh, uh, important things for the downstream state <coughs> or that m2 should be m2 should be less than 1. So, that means it is uh, subsonic and s2 should be greater than s1, which means that Uh, state 2, since S2 is greater than S1, state 2 lies to the right of uh, state 1 and since it is subsonic, it should lie above the m equal to 1 line. Now, bear in mind that uh, T0 itself remains constant because the uh, flow is adiabatic. So, as you can see from here, so 
which means that uh, t star will remain the same right. So, this is always the uh, m equal to 1 line because t 0 does not change. So, that means state 2 should uh, or probably will lie somewhere like this ok. So, that S 2 is greater than S 1 and M 2 is less than 1. And in this case, uh, this is uh, S equal to S 1 right. Let me show it here like this. So, this is S equal to S 1 and we now draw a new uh, line S equal to S 2. So, this is S equal to S 2 and again uh, the state is uh, uh, subsonic which means that it will lie <coughs> above this. So, state 2 will most likely be somewhere there. Let us see. So, so state 2 is shown here, this is P2, T2 and remember T0 is the same. So, so you can see that T0 is the same. So, the line of intersection point of interest, I am sorry, point of intersection of uh, S equal to S2 equal to constant line and the stagnation temperature gives us the stagnation state. Same is true here, this is S equal to S2, remember this is S equal to S1. So, the point of intersection of S equal to S2 and the uh, isotherm T equal to T0 gives us the stagnation state and this is P02. So, you can clearly see uh, from the PV diagram that P02 is less than P01. which means that there is a loss of stagnation pressure as a result of the irreversibility S2 greater than S1 ok. So, we have uh, we have now we are now encountering a loss of stagnation pressure which is uh, which is a concomitant of the normal shock compression process. Notice that we have connected uh, state 1 and 2 with this line, but there is really no line. So, it is a dashed line and you must uh, uh, be clear that it is a wave solution, which means we have state 1, we have state 2. The process, there is no process connecting state 1 and state 2, it is an irreversible uh, process and we do not know how the two are connected. So, we are treating it as a wave like solution, which means it is discontinuous. So, the flow jumps from, uh, so if you actually look at the, uh, uh, the illustration here, the flow jumps from state 1 to state 2. In fact, um, uh, if you actually um, th again uh, think about the acoustic wave and the normal shock wave, um, in the case of an acoustic wave, uh, we get a series of uh, a train of uh, uh, compression and rarefaction fronts. And um, uh, so, when I when I hold up let us say, uh, uh, let us say uh, a pitot tube like this ok, where I want to measure the static pressure and the sound wave actually uh, passes over the pitot tube. The process undergone by the fluid uh, as we measure its pressure is isentropic which means the pressure disturbance uh, increases or decreases the pressure only slightly. So, if I try to sketch that on uh, on a PV diagram like this, so let us say this is our S equal to S1 line. So, what would happen is that you would see something like this. So, the pressure would increase or decrease like this by a small amount. I have exaggerated that greatly here. So, you are going to see um, a fluctuation of the pressure about a mean value uh, both on the positive side and negative side as the um, as the train of compression and refraction front passes through the pressure uh, just goes up and down like this as I have shown here. Now, in the case of a normal shock, it is a single wave which passes through. So, the fluid uh, would be at some state and then 
as the flow, as the wave passes over this, it will jump to a higher pressure just in one go. And then the pressure will remain the same for some time and then it will slowly relax back to the ambient condition. So, it would not look like this, it will probably jump to a higher pressure like this from here to here, and then it will slowly relax over some time and then come back to the uh, atmospheric value or whatever uh, ambient pressure value. Okay. So, that is the difference between uh, an acoustic wave solution and a normal shock solution. So, this is in a slightly uh, different frame of reference. So, uh, in case you find it uh, confusing, we can always do this in a stationary frame of reference where the wave is moving. Okay. Remember, this is in a uh, moving frame of reference. So, let us uh, do it like this. Okay. So, let us say that this is um, uh, P ambient, this is the initial state uh, beneath my probe. So, this is P ambient and it is at uh, let us say T ambient. Okay. So, this is the initial S equal to S1 line and let us say that this is T equal to T ambient. So, now when an acoustic wave passes uh, through my probe, you know, we are in a stationary frame of reference. So, the acoustic wave comes through here alternating uh, compression and rarefaction waves. So, what happens is and the process is isentropy. So, I move along this uh, isentrope, I am sorry. So, I move along this isentrope like this up and down like this. So, the pressure uh, increase or decrease is uh, infinitesim infinitesimally small. Now, in the case of a normal shock wave, what would happen is we start from here and we jump to a the, the pitot probe shows an instantaneous uh, increase in pressure and temperature like this. And then it slowly relaxes back to the uh, um, uh, ambient uh, temperature. So, it slowly relaxes back to the ambient temperature and then it slowly comes back to uh, the original state that it was in. Okay. So, it will it jumps like this and then it comes back like this. Okay. I um, uh, suggest that you um, uh, consult the textbook. I have given this in great detail in the textbook. So, please uh, look at it if you are interested. Okay. So, that is the difference between an acoustic wave and a, uh, and a, uh, and a normal shock wave. So, what I have done here is uh, what I have done next is, so we have this solution M2 and I have plotted all these quantities P2 over P1, T2 over P1, P02 over P01 as a function of the initial Mach number. Okay, so, let us take a look. Uh, so, this is done both for monatomic, I am sorry, diatomic and monatomic gases, although we will probably not discuss um, uh, that aspect too much in this course. We will only take a look at the qualitative uh, trends. Okay. So, as you can see, um, as the initial Mach number increases, the, um, uh, the, the Mach number after the flow, uh, after the passing through the after passage through the shock wave um, uh, keeps uh, getting smaller and smaller and it sort of reach it seems to reach an asymptotic value. It is not going uh, down to like 0 or anything like that. It seems to be reaching an asymptotic value which we will uh, show in a minute. Okay. 